I've been fascinated with the sea ever since I was a child. I grew up in a very urban area, so I didn't have much nature, but the only thing I had was the seaside. So I spent my childhood running around the beach, catching crabs and observing all manner of shore life and coastal species. I always enjoy the sea and going uh, out with my family, you know, during the summer and even in winter times. Uh, it, it always fascinated me. The fishing regulations governing our waters might be crafted in distant offices, but the knowledge they rely on starts here, out at sea, with scientific observers. These men and women are the backbone of the EU fisheries data collection. But who are these scientists? How do they work? And how do they contribute to preserving our marine ecosystem? It's early morning in Malta, the small EU member state nestled in the Mediterranean Sea. On board this traditional fishing boat are three special guests, Kelly, Luca, and Frank, all working for Aquatic Resources Malta, or ARM. This research unit of the Maltese Public Department of Fisheries and Aquaculture has a crucial mission, provide policymakers with accurate data on the health of the ocean. I work with a fantastic team of biologists and field observers and together we undertake all of the data collection pertaining to the EU obligations. Today we're on an onboard observation, which is one of our routine uh, observation efforts, where we get the opportunity to go out on board with fishermen and take measurements of what they catch, both fish that they intend to land and by catching discards. It's the best part of the job because you basically get to see and work with the fishers themselves and you get to see the full uh, fishing industry. As the crew hauls in their catches, the scientists observe, analyze and record basic biological data. This information is very valuable to policymakers and decision makers because we can quantify how much it costs from an ecological standpoint to catch commercially important species because for every commercial species you catch you end up also catching species that are unrelated and that would otherwise not have been targeted by fisheries. This data compiled at EU level under a multi-annual fisheries data collection will not just guide the work of policymakers on fish stocks and resources, it will also serve as a basis to reinforce the socioeconomic pillar of the fishing sector, according to this minister. I really believe in the need of balancing the environmental, the social and the economic pillars when it comes to projecting policies for the sector. Though the fishing sector accounts for just 1% of Malta's GDP and employs around 1,000 fishers, this former academic turned politician says that fishing is deeply linked to the nation's identity and that science can play a crucial role in preserving this cultural heritage. I believe that science informs our decision making. So you need data to be able to predict the future. There has been quite a good representative amount of, of scientists boarding a different vessels, both trawlers and also um, travel netters and longliners, which uh, makes uh, data collection quite representative. Onboard observations are just one method scientists use to study the fishing industry. At 4 o'clock in the morning, the bell rings, signaling the start of the Maltese fish auction. Buyers eagerly compete for the finest catches that will end up on dinner plates across the island. However, Frank is here for a different reason. As part of the data collection multi-annual plan, we have a budget from where we can buy the fish. Then um, fish bought from here, we are going to process them um, at our laboratories. There are biometric samples, mainly length, weight, sex and maturity. These swordfish and dolphin fish arrive at the offices of Aquatic Resources Malta around the same time as Frank's colleagues. The difficult work can begin. The fish are meticulously dissected to study their biological parameters, marking the first step in the comprehensive data collection process that will ultimately reach the European Commission.
our fish stocks are shared with our neighboring countries. So it is very important that our data sets between member states are shared and then aggregated together according to the data calls that we receive from the European Commission and other fora which work with the European Commission. Now, this data then uh, from these data calls uh, is used for modeling the stocks, uh, that is the fish stocks that we have around the Maltese Islands. These are then aggregated at the regional level and then we can determine the management measures at the policy level from the collected data sets. With a PhD in statistics and mathematics, Jürgen is well equipped to supervise the data collection, as well as several other projects carried out by the 35 workers at ARM. However, his interest in fishing is also driven by personal motivation. In the fishery sector, we have uh, predominantly small-scale fishers, meaning that uh, these are still traditional fishers uh, and uh, they are still obviously providing our food. So for me, that is something crucial for a country because if you have someone, a family, who is providing food for the country, that is quite important. Like in many places around the Mediterranean, Maltese fishermen face several issues like climate change, pollution, stock depletion and intense competition. The small-scale nature of their activity renders these challenges even more daunting. I believe that we have not managed to cater for the diversity and the heterogeneity of fishers, especially the small-scale ones. Most of the time, um, these four uh, give a lot of focus to the commercially large fishers and having an industry in Malta where over 90% of our fishers are of a small-scale nature, I think that we, we need to have more um, European fora that actually cater for the small-scale fishing industry. This opinion is shared by the scientists on board fishing vessels who help foster trust between fishers and policymakers. It is very important that we have a good working relationship with fishermen and at the end of the day their interests are our own interests. If the sea isn't doing well we want to know because if we can figure out and identify just where things seem to be struggling, we can raise this with policy makers and decision makers so that they are more equipped to take proper course of action in order to try and protect the sea and the interests of the fishermen. As long as the health of our oceans remains in jeopardy, the scientific work of Frank, Luca and Kelly will be essential in addressing this problem and shaping a shared vision for the future of our marine ecosystem.